Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, more than half of all Muslims in the UK believe government policies have had a negative impact on their lives. That's according to a new report exclusively shown to this programme. A study by the Islamic Human Rights Commission found many Muslims feel they've been treated with suspicion and mistrust. The report's authors say the government's security and anti-extremism measures, among other policies, have fueled discrimination against Muslims in Britain. BBC Asian Network's Divya Talwa has this investigation. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We go that way. Iman's 19 and recently converted to Islam. She hasn't told her family yet, so we're keeping her anonymous. Her college suspected she may have been radicalised and she was flagged up to officers under the government's counter-extremism agenda, Prevent. Was there any change in your behaviour that may have aroused any kind of concern? So nothing that I think that would, you know, trigger anything at all, but yeah, I guess that was the reason I started wearing a hijab and that was enough for them to contact Prevent. Under new anti-terror laws, teachers now have a duty to report students they suspect are at risk of radicalisation. Imam believes the government's alienating Muslim students. Normal misguided teenager, like you know, a lot of us are, when they get angry and frustrated at things, they are going to turn to people for support. And if the only support they have are there are those who are extremists, then they're pushing them into the hands of what they're trying to avoid happening. The Islamic Human Rights Commission has been looking into discrimination against Muslims in Britain for nearly two decades. A survey they carried out of more than 1,700 Muslims living in the UK found more than half believed government policies, like those countering extremism, had negatively impacted them. The impact of government policies, in particular those related with security, but not solely, have really had an impact on silencing Muslims, to be honest. And I don't mean silencing them just from the point of view of uh, talking about political things, but even to do things like report anti-Muslim hatred. Almost 60% of Muslims questioned by the IHRC believe they'd been viewed with suspicion. With new duties even on nurseries to look out for signs of radicalization, some parents fear children need to be careful about how they act. So I am scared of the things that come out of her mouth. Like recently we went to, uh, we were involved in a Syrian fundraiser. So she says, Mummy, one day we'll go to Syria and we'll go see my toys because she misses the dolls and we'll go see the little girl who has my toy and she's looking after her. And I'm just like, shh. In a statement, a Home Office spokesman said the government's committed to tackling anti-Muslim hatred and the Prevent Agenda is about protecting those who might be vulnerable to radicalisation. But the worry in some Muslim communities is that new measures to combat extremism will only alienate and demonise them. Well, that was presented by Divya Tawa in collaboration with BBC Asian Network. If you want to watch or share the full film, you can find it on our programme page, bbc.co.uk forward slash Victoria. Well, we can talk now to Murad Alam, a Muslim father of two. His family had to move home after being targeted by racists. In Leeds, Adam Walker from the Ahmadiyya Muslim Association, which helped the government form its counter-extremism strategy. And Azad Ali from the organisation MEND, that stands for Muslim Engagement and Development, Thank you all for joining us. Um, Murad, first of all, your family had to move house after being targeted by racists. What happened? That's correct, yeah. We uh, had a knock on the door one night, um, opened the door, and somebody had left a wooden cross with ham and pork tied to it. So it was quite disgusting at the time. Um, my wife and children were racially abused in the street. Um, someone cut, cut the broadband line, the telephone line, which I thought was very sinister. Um, racial graffiti uh, sprayed outside the house. Um, my child was um, punched in the uh, Bingham Town Centre. Um, quite a few racist incidents. What do you think triggered that? Just fear, really. Um, there weren't any Muslim families in the area. They don't know Muslims. My wife was visibly a Muslim. She wore a headscarf, um, not to cover her face or anything, but you know, just a normal standard headscarf. I think people are just scared. They're scared of what they don't know. So did it start to happen after you moved to a new neighbourhood? Oh, yeah, yeah. We moved to uh, the neighbourhood of Bingham, which is just outside Nottingham. 
um, after living in West Bridgeford and that's when the problems started to occur. Now, the authors of the report today say that the government's anti-extremism measures have fueled discrimination against Muslims. Do you believe that's the case? I do believe that's the case. Um, recently, they're trying to bring in draconian laws to um, look at internet history. Um, people hear that and they think, you know, we don't want this. And then they look at someone to blame. Who shall we blame? Well, let's blame the terrorists. Who are the terrorists? The Muslims. And, you know, it's a train of thought I'm getting from a lot of people at the moment. Um, Adam, you're from the Ahmadiyya Muslim Foundation who had input into the government's counter-extremism policy. Do you think that policy may have helped to fuel discrimination? Um, I think that the policy is far more nuanced than that. Um, you know, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has um, supported some of the, the core principles of it. So, for example, uh, the new Islamophobia laws that are coming into place that look to tackle irrational fear of Muslims um, and criminalise um, sort of a, aggression, verbal and threatening behaviour um, towards Muslims is something that could help um, people that face this sort of discrimination. So I, I'm not sure if it has, um, or certainly the new changes that are coming into place, particularly looking at dealing with both Muslim, Muslim extremists um, who are a minority and also the minority of right-wing extremists too. So that should um, certainly help with children in school, with um, people generally, but it's a case of, of watch this space really and um, see how it's implemented. When there is a policy um, of telling people to report any concerns that they have uh, if they see a change in behaviour or anything that uh, might give rise to concerns, um, and then you hear from Im Iman in our film who was reported after she decided to start wearing the hijab, does it seem to you that there is clear scope for um, people to be perhaps looked at more suspiciously than, than maybe fair? I, th I think that that's a fair comment and I think that you know really there are a lot there's a lot more clarification and definition that needs to be added to the current um, laws and and people shouldn't be um, wrongly discriminated against the principle should always be that the government is just in how it um, applies laws so I would uh, I would certainly agree with that Azad does the government have a, fi a careful line to tread when wanting to raise awareness when wanting people to report their fears but also obviously mindful of the sensitivities around that? Yeah, I, th I think the government's approach at the moment is very confused and is confusing uh, the public and the IHRC report and what your report showed is that it is having a disproportionate and discriminatory impact on the Muslim community. I mean, we talk about, if, if you look at prevent uh, and, and some of the definition of prevent, uh, democracy is a key value. Um, so then, you know, we're trying to say the government is saying democracy is an important value and then it invites someone who led a coup in Egypt uh, uh, to number 10. So it's kind of, you know, all of these confusing messages are problematic. I think, you know, to approach, uh, w the government isn't actually also clear in what it's trying to deal with. Is it trying to deal with a crime? Because criminality is, is a simple issue in, in some sense to define and, and work towards. Or is it trying to define and change people's behavior? And that's what a lot of Muslims are concerned about, that there is behavioural changes uh, or social engineering that's taking place. And I think it's really important for all of us in society to understand actually what's been impacted is all our liberties. And if I can just be given one minute to give you an example, uh, we've recently had a case where a child was reported to Children's Services because he said my father went to Saudi Arabia and it was on a holiday and that he apparently uh, went on a demonstration. His ma mother explained that, you know, yes, my husband did go to uh, Saudi Arabia, it was Hajj, it was pilgrimage, but my son only went to a football match. But that son uh, was reported to Channel, which is a prevent uh, uh, program, and then Children's Services called, uh, called up and they've told the parents that, you know, your child is going to be on our register. Now, how does that make a, a, a family feel? How does that make mo a mother and a father feel? You know, what are they going to uh, educate their children? How are they going to feel, okay, I'm sending my son to school, my daughter to school. If they talk about Islam, are they going to get reported? And how this is... Yes, I this want is, to get Adam's thoughts on that, yeah. Adam, on that specific case. I mean, on that specific case, I would, I would um, you know, say that it's completely wrong and there are clearly ethical problems with how far a teacher or a nurse um, or a public servant can be expected to do the job of the police. 
and, and those are spaces that really need to be more well defined. Um, however, I think it's problematic when we look at this kind of, of government strategy as though it's a single strategy and it's just one entity. It, it comprises of many different elements. So for example, I don't want my child to be exposed in a teaching environment to someone that used to be an extremist. No one would disagree with that. I want Absolutely. my children to be safe from um, right-wing extremists and also teachers with right-wing leanings uh, and we see more and more cases of this in schools um, uh, increasingly every day. So these are elements of the law that I think that are productive. Looking at online, um, the online um, propaganda that uh, uh, extremists use is something that's very worthwhile but I do agree that there needs to be much more definition um, and, and, and we can't conflate issues because Absolutely. when we talk about heads of states there are heads of states that come um, I mean, every single week there are protests regarding different heads of states that come. Just Many do, are completely you, unrelated say, to are, Islam. Are you saying, Adam? Are you saying, Adam, that it's okay to invite someone who led a coup that actually got removed the only democratic government in Egypt? Are you saying, saying it was okay? No, no, no. I'm not saying that then at then all. Then where is the conflation? No, no, I'm What's not the saying that at all. What I, what I'm I think, saying Adam, I, whilst I, I, I totally I, I agree with you, no, what, what, I, what whilst I'm saying I totally is agree that with you, when we look at when we when we look at these sorts of issues, when we look at, for example, internet laws that come into play, these are things that will impact everybody. These are issues that all Brits have, but not just stay, Muslims. Let's stay focused on the description. And to address your, sorry, to address your right, central I'm point. Really, we are right we, out of time. We are right out of time, but thank you all very much. And uh, we did ask someone from the Home Office uh, ahead of this interview to join us, but no one was available. But they have put out a statement uh, saying we are continuing to work in partnership with communities of all faith backgrounds to challenge those who spread hatred and intolerance. We must work with the overwhelming majority of Muslims who abhor the twisted narrative that has seduced some of our people. We must continue to celebrate Islam as a great world religion of peace. This government is committed to combating all forms of hate crime and has done more than any other to counter anti-Muslim hatred. Last month, the Prime Minister announced that police forces in England and Wales will be required to record anti-Muslim hate crimes as a specific category in the recorded crime statistics for the first time. I've been getting away with it all.